I'm thinking that if you're if you're a, an enforcement type, then uh, you have the equivalent of dog tax on you, so that they can basically <laughs> so that they can mm. <laughs> return you to your organization in whichever state they they find <laughs> you. <laughs> basically, so so I'm thinking mm, when it comes to the seeker ID. That should be easily accessible and assume that everybody can get to it and everybody who deals with her will know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like um, when, uh, when Vessel Solitaire contacts any network, it's going to it's gonna leave a trace. Like it's it's not a hidden process. You can't you can't do private private browsing on your uh, service vehicle, basically. And I would think that the same applies to all sorts of uh, personal electronics and doodads and uh, and IDs. So even if she doesn't actively slot her badge somewhere, uh, the data should still be sort of like immediately readable and out there if somebody scoops her up from uh, from forest floor. When you look at that, we have a snowstorm. Well, not quite storm, but snow. Yeah, we've been we've been having like gusts of snow all through April, and now to half May. And on one hand, it is not completely unheard of that uh, that we have some snowfall late in the later in the spring, but. Uh, Having it with such regularity, that's that's pretty new. They, s they say that uh, uh, it's because certain uh, stratosphere wind patterns are like, uh, I think like this, uh, they call it jet stream, the sort of big river of air that the pattern has changed. Uh, the, the, the jet stream that, uh, uh, that surrounds the Arctic has changed the pattern and that means uh, our our shit uh, is different from usual or different from what we are used to mm. because this uh, this winter was uh, well as much as I saw it <laughs> so let's say from from Janu from uh, November January and February <laughs> uh, <laughs> the the winter actually looked a lot like uh, British winter uh, we, we had very little snow, we didn't have too much proper cold, it was sort of uh, snotty and, and damp and, uh, and, uh, and very mild overall. And then on top of that, it has been a very, very late and very cold spring. So it's like there's, there's very little difference between <laughs> April and February. <laughs> there should be a very pronounced difference. And uh, and of course, right now uh, the sheer sun exposure is enough to warm some shit up. But yeah, the the frequent snow uh, that late in the year is kind of a new thing. Hmm. It's all change. <laughs> yeah, and not for the better. Mm. I like our seasons the way they they are, <laughs> or the way they were. So the 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 point we've arrived at is that Jewel would have dog tag equivalents, yeah. and that information would be easily accessible. But it wouldn't be Jewel Harper; it would be Valkyrie, right? Yeah. Yeah, because okay. uh, because Jewel Harbor, not everybody else, uh, like people outside her home circle, not knowing that she is Jewel Harbor, is like the major major plot point. Mm. And uh, this is actually leading to uh, uh, leading to a sort of another obstacle or or, or thing to resolve later when she. Uh, when she talks with the official, I have to figure out a plausible format or a pl plausible medium 
which would let her easily uh, present her birth identity. But it, it has to be such a medium that uh, won't be casually read remotely all the time. So mm. it, 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 can't, it can't be like an open file somewhere on Solitaire's data bank. It has to be something, something that can be shut down. And something that can't be passively read willy-nilly. So the original idea that I had that she has some sort of uh, implant, uh, ID implant uh, in her wrist, I'm not sure if that's if that if that's a very good idea because that sort of chip might be might be readable remotely. So it's more like she has to unlock something or switch something on or this might be taking it a bit too far but her claim is that she's his she's they're related right mm. so maybe instead of her presenting an ID of some kind maybe he's got a device that can can analyze her maybe yeah I don't know. but yeah but if that were the case it, it again it would mean that uh, her shit is in the database is available which means it's available all the time which means uh, uh, I meant more like it, he could get a, a sample from her and just compare it to to fortunes to see if it matches up not that he's got stuff on jewel on file or anything like that just the comparison between the two would match up I think oh, I'm okay. maybe overthinking this a bit though I think you have got the right idea with the whole something that's not accessible or mm -hmm. open but is easy for Jewel to present for her to say hey I am legit yeah like sort of I'm, I'm thinking in terms of uh, slipping an extra data chip into into the data pad or, or slipping showing I don't know show, showing him with some with in a few easy steps hmm And of course, the... of course, the thing is that once that info is out there, the likelihood that that she would be exposed grows greatly. But then again, for her, yeah, for her, the whole I identity thing isn't even. It is. A, it, it's a huge issue for us, but her for her, it's just a matter of uh, oh username. Like she knows that she know, uh, like she knows that nobody knows or nobody's supposed to know who she is, but uh, but she's not actively hiding her identity. I think it's more mm. like uh, she doesn't want uh, much to do with her past. So it's more about getting away from family rather than hiding that she she's uh, this uh, outcast uh, uh, outcast uh, trade house heiress. <laughs> Mm. So basically, uh, when we get to that point, there there will be a few ideas to address, and I think yeah, if if we sort of if we if we go with the idea that okay, her birth identity or her birth data is not. Uh, is not public knowledge, but it is not super secret or anything. Then it might easily be a uh, a data chip somewhere, like embedded data chip, something that you would have to connect. You know, like you you would have to physically connect with something to to have it read. Hmm. I'm wondering if. Now this is really tangential, but maybe Max. Like it, it strikes me as an RF, an a, an implanted chip of some kind or data device mm -hmm. of some kind wouldn't usually be Jules' thing. However, you can like the earworm's different. The earworm has a function, whereas the RFID is sort of like a, a control measure in a way. I think Maxis might have put something like that in, maybe. Yeah, it's it, uh, or it might be a standard procedure. 
Yes, that's also very true. It's like <laughs> it's like the uh, job chips in, in Futurama. I, I haven't seen enough of Futurama to know. It's it's the first episode, I think, or the second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. If uh, let's say, mm, I n I know that I'm I'm building up a contrivance here. I'm sort of ret retconning and backpedaling the in-universe technology to fit our nefarious <laughs> goals. Uh, but let's say if. Uh, if the personal ID chips uh, were to uh, were designed so that you can't uh, like they they if they if they were somewhat shielded by design like you can't let's say you can't read it remotely unless the user gives it an explicit permission like you you do need to at least uh, touch it together with something. Hmm. Yeah, I think that works better than it being remotely accessible. That solves mm -hmm. the first set of problems. Yeah, because uh, initially I thought that okay, she uh, she has some sort of uh, mm, I don't know lineage, heritage, ID thingy uh, implanted somewhere, and she grants him access. And uh, it was all it was all fine until I started thinking, and uh, and I thought like oh wait if she has this thing easily accessible enough to just present it to him then what stops everybody else reading it all the time and exposing her secret? But but yeah I never I uh, it didn't occur to me that it is. It really, it really isn't that much of a secret. She's, uh, she's hiding from her family, not, uh, not from the others. Maybe not so much. Or it's mm. more like she's embarrassed of her fam family. So it's, it's, it's not about protecting the identity. It's more like mm, I would rather they not know. Yeah. Hmm. I think the chip's a good idea. I think, uh, but it's got to be, you got to be closer than, you know, reading a barcode to be able to use yeah, it, though, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, it, it wouldn't be visually, you, you can't, uh, you can't just uh, optically get it. You you have to, you have to have a, a specialized reader and, uh, and that, all that sort of shit. Mm-hmm. The sort of reader you typically find in law enforcement circles. Because <laughs> <coughs> we've got, uh, it's kind of different, but we've got the lantern system in the UK. So when people give fake details by the side of the road, mm -hmm. the police use the lantern kit, which is like a, it's, it, it's a fingerprint machine, basically. It's like a portable fingerprint machine. And then the criminals will use it, and then the police will be like, "You gave us the wrong name. Now get in the back of the car." Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's not unheard of for law enforcement to have mm -hmm. awesome gadgets like that, you know. Uh, well, I would I would assume that all sorts of uh, enforcer types do have easy access or do routinely pack the readers. Uh, I'm just thinking that. Uh, since she is moving in those circles, she would uh, she would assume that somebody might uh, quote unquote read her without uh, without her consent, which uh, while not catastrophic might still be embarrassing. So I remember so so kind of sort of thinking about it and adding in the idea that she uh, she has a sort of patch of or like a band-aid of uh, some sort of shielding shielding tape atop of it 
but uh, the thing with that is that if I just write it out like this, it's it's coming, it's sort of coming out of nowhere. Also, uh, she's been in so many brawls and uh, and uh, brawls and shit and uh, infirmary that uh, any sort of uh, easy adhesive goop would have uh, would have peeled away. Hmm. My wallet's got a shield on it to stop people mm -hmm. nicking the details. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I can imagine something like that. Just in sticky back or, or band-aid form. Mm -hmm. uh, or it would... Rec for example, if... <laughs> again, my, uh, sort of tweaking or contriving the in-universe technology to fit my nefarious goals. Uh, if she had to un unlock or or some some there, if there would be some sort of uh, user level unlocking thing, you know, like a like a pin code or something. So you're like. You you tap <laughs> you tap on your wrist, <laughs> or like basically you you somehow uh, open it up for reading. Mm. But it has to be it has to be very sort of like on one hand it has to be simple for the user's sake and it has to be simple enough so that it doesn't uh, clunk up the text. But I think let's uh, let's start reading chapter 10. Before we do down the bottom here, the container with your belongings is unlocked, Miss Harper. Oh. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put my marker there, or I'm just gonna put my cursor there, and I'll <sighs> let you come find me. I I kind of like the idea that they are referring to her as Miss. Mm-hmm. There is a certain anachronism there. So let's let's just say let let's let's say that they call her Miss Valkyrie. Yep. It's like this is this is this is the this is the username she goes by <laughs> and they just add uh, a uh, modifier to it yep okay let's do this chapter 10 <laughs> readings miss valkyrie you should be resting for three more circadians, in fact. The bold lady at the control station endured her gaze without flinching. The last few waking cycles she'd spent under the meticulous care of Arcade's disciples. Jewel had grown increasingly annoyed at their dispassionate ways and the gentle conviction in their tone when they uttered yet another such is the way response. Do I get my gear back? No, such is the agreement, the disciple offered a solemn nod with a hint of a smile. While under our care, all enforcer privileges and all faction affiliations are suspended. It sounded as if she was quoting some sort of codex. We grant safe recovery for those in need. We do not aid their goals in any other manner. She probably was quoting some codex or scripture, Jewel realized. Ancient organizations were often weird like that. Very noble of you. Listen, I've got work to do and I'm fine. Very noble of you. Listen, I've got work to do. And I'm fine. She settled into a less strenuous pose. Mostly fine. I take it you wish to withdraw from our facility then? It was Jules turn to endure the gaze. Yes. Yes, I do. The disciple on duty gave her a measuring look, then tapped through a series of medical records. Very well. You are not in any immediate danger. You are... Jewel could almost see the mental checklist. 
physically capable of leaving on your own volition, and you are mm, cognizant and sentient enough to make decisions on your behalf. Jewel frowned at the extra pause. Please be notified that we do strongly recommend you do you not to leave until your recovery is complete. Yet we shall respect your decision. The disciple t the disciple tapped some sequence into her console, and Jewel could hear a muffled mechanism gearing into motion. Then a thud clank in a in a hallway nearby. The container with your belongings is unlocked, Miss Valkyrie. She looked Jewel in the eye with genuine concern and handed her a small box. Please take these. Just trust me on this. And please, try not to punch anything. Those knuckle fractures heal faster when undisturbed. Jewel nodded. Thanks. I take it Seeker HQ is handling my expenses? Of course. The stoic half-smile had returned. Such is the agreement. Okay, this this reads much better than chapter nine. <laughs> I like this a lot, yeah. Uh, and uh, I can see some places here where some of the uh, some of the sort of observations. I can present some of these observations as Jewel's inner thoughts. So it's like. Oh my god, you're quoting from a scripture, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> that that sort of thing. So yeah. it's instead of instead of trying to incorporate them in uh in the text proper, I can uh I can make them convert them into the inner thought format. And also I realized this will help me out in chapter 9, like when she's uh, when she's already uh, halfway passed out and 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 trying to keep up the tracking like uh two footprints no three <laughs> <laughs> so some of some of that can be i can play around with the thought process there i think and it yeah. will it will it will work better than the current version <coughs> <coughs> and uh one uh, possible or one improvement that you currently didn't read but I think I will stick to it is that uh, all sorts of science and medical personnel uh, would probably use uh, Latin format so uh, when she says you should be resting for three more circa diem in fact and keep okay. it uh, italicized So it's like civilian speak is circadians, medical speak is circadian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else does? Yeah, so uh, I do see, or I did pick up some minor, minor copy edit things, but these are. Compared to chapter nine, this will be a piece of cake," she said naively. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you can read on. Jewel paced along the infinite arching hallway leading from the Disciples' medical module to the port central hub. She had to adjust her jacket from time to time to counteract all the travel food she'd loaded its pockets with. Reaching another junction, she saw a janitor approaching on a mobile maintenance unit, commanding a small army of arachno drones. Help you, ma'am! Jewel watched one of the critters cling to the window panel above and whir on its way. Oh, I'm good! She took a reassuring glance towards the navigation aids on the floor. All good then. The janitor tipped his hat and put another drone on task. Say, you seekers look at a setup shop here. Jewel frowned. No, why would you think so? No reason. He poked a thumb at his shoulder. Just been spotting a few of these badges lately. We don't exactly get too many visitors here. Thought I'd ask. Jewel nodded, a little too nauseous to think. She fetched two pills from the box and bit them down. Sure you're fine? You don't look that hot. Jewel managed to smile. Get in there. How much farther to the central? 
another thousand paces easy better take a transport yeah he pointed at a series of booths near the junction thanks she felt better already right yeah mm -hmm. I'm... yeah like let's see how I would I would read it another thousand paces easy yeah uh, besides a few word exchanges I think this one is pretty okay. Mm. So about spotting, spotting the badges. Uh, I think a, a few is a gross e exaggeration. It's more like uh, you're the second one I've come mm. across lately, or or or, or more like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The transporter spat jewel into an echoing transparent steel caldera, sparsely peppered with people going about their business. The port's justice office was supposed to be in this area, somewhere. She tried to read the giant overhead info boards and immediately felt overwhelmed by the flurry of images and languages. The ferocious advertising could easily create the impression that the port was running at full capacity. But perhaps that was their intent. Jewel turned away from the boards and picked a spot where she could monitor the people instead. Soon enough, a pair of patrolling uniforms passed by. Jewel examined their insignia. There it was. A security logo. She didn't recall the company itself, but the tag's placement and shape left no doubt in her mind that these were the local justice contractors. She moved on with a renewed sense of purpose and soon marched into a dull but human scale lobby. Okay, here the main issue is with the uh, security. So my main main question I here is that uh, would the port security or port the uh, justice office be run by harem patrol as well or or do we, hmm. do we need to bring in another one <laughs> that's a big question um, the we refer to it in the previous chapter as local security don't we when like we're talking about heron patrol and then we're talking about local security as sort of a different thing yeah but uh that yeah and and that is the question are we gonna yeah. keep them different or are we gonna sort of uh specify that the local security is also run by by heron patrol because because there isn't much of a this this isn't a fully populated homeworld there isn't much mm. of a sort of local uh local shit to even uh produce the locals you don't even have the locals then <laughs> 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 like if you if you don't have the locals how can you have local local shop for local people with local <laughs> security <laughs> so so basically uh, what I'm thinking is that uh, whatever security and enforcement functions they have, some some company is is providing that service. Now the main question is, will it be will it be Heron Patrol, or will we leave them only to run the prison station? The simplest solution is to have Heron Patrol ro mm -hmm. run this this ground security operation mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So I think go with that. Yeah. I'm not even going to try and justify bringing in a new team or whatever. I yeah. Got... <laughs> yeah. Besides, that means I would have to think of an, another name. Hmm. <laughs> not the Dodecahedron. <laughs> they, they, will, <laughs> they they will they will have their. Uh, their their entry. Mm. They're in my notes. Yeah. They're in my my Chaos Nova notes of yeah, awesomeness. Yeah. 
I think uh, I think the point uh, to bring in other security and enforcement companies would be in a busier home world. Mm. Like this is this is a back back gas uh, location with uh, sort of sparsely peppered crew. <laughs> mm. So so yeah, it's more like uh the stance I would take here is that the local enforcement and security functions are contracted to Heron Patrol and that includes providing guards or, or whatever shady business goes on there, providing uh, providing enforcement to the prison station or contracting the, to that. So it's, so it's that uh, the Heron thing isn't isn't uh, inherently tied to the station it's more like heron has presence here and they also uh have have given some stuff to the station does this present a problem later on where we have the conversation with the security dude and he's like of course i know what's going on up there I w i'd like to stop it is there nah. perhaps some issues there no yeah yeah All because right, cool. because uh Heron Patrol guards on the station is one thing. Like they are, they are providing the service, but uh, the the station is actually owned and run by whomever, whoever is setting up whatever sick experiment is going on in there. So, so, so basically, that is a whole unknown entity. We are okay. not even we are not even addressing that, only implying, but the the Heron Patrol are basically hired mooks. Mm hmm. All right. Cool. Sweet deal, yeah. <laughs> and now I've got Space Vault Tech stuck in my head again, thanks. And then this next paragraph is where it all goes downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking asshole, man. <laughs> Read on. Just a second. Okay. I hate this guy so fucking much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. It was like yesterday when we were watching the podcast or the day before and that geezer was like it's good when people say that they they want my they want my character to uh what what was it he said basically it was like mission accomplished if i get people mm -hmm. to hate my characters and i think mission accomplished with Rafe you've nailed that <laughs> 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 So let me let me replace some words right away. I really don't like Wonder Puppy. Oh? No. I don't know why, but I prefer the Master's Puppy over Wonder Puppy. That's for sure. But Master's Puppy doesn't uh, doesn't make any sense because who's the master then? Hmm. Like snowing proper now. <laughs> Would it just be simpler to say if it isn't teacher's pet in regards to like raptor, maybe? Yeah, but that uh, that would uh, that would imply that uh, point one that raptor is indeed training them, and two that uh, wraith has some issue with raptor. But I would keep it more neutral than that. So it's more like, uh, 
like the prodigy or something. Uh, leave. I will leave it right now and let's uh, let's discuss it when we get there. So just read this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jewel was sorting her case info and final finalizing the language choices in a registration terminal when a familiar voice made her jaw clench. If it isn't the master's puppy! What a coincidence! Suddenly she was a rookie again, clad in her pinched two short punch rags, breathing the sweat and cedar dust of training compound, glowering at the usual rude cheers and snide chuckles coming from the senior's corner. She turned, already furious at what she'd have to confront. Fuckhead Wraith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, uh the main so issue angry. here <laughs> <laughs> So much anger mm -hmm. uh, the main issue with their dialogue is choice of expressions. Mm. Uh I think I uh, I have replaced, like, I have, I have been uh, going back and forth between fuckhead and fuckface, I think. Fuckface mm. reads better to me because it's punchier. Mm. But, uh, but then again, here comes the whole uh, in-universe insults potential. Like, is it, w if, uh, I could just leave it. I could just leave it and it, it could be fine and at the same time I'm thinking hmm what if there is a more appropriate uh, sort of uh, tagline they could be using mm. or like in in universe wares mm. so we could leave it like this or we could add a bit of flavor mm -hmm. mm, okay so that's so this is this isn't uh, this isn't a sort of correction as such but more like an advanced some advanced shit right there and of course now that we have spent so much time uh, in world and we're more familiar with the whole shit it might it might be possible to come up with something hmm. like, like I remember I remember a while ago we did try to come up with some in universe insults and it didn't we didn't come up with too many <laughs> nothing in, good nothing good came out of that in Mira's legion uh originally when Mira's like oh nothing to worry about Rolo just a bit of ship sickness Rolo hands her a packet of norgunk <laughs> which was your terminology for chewing gum, mm -hmm. uh, but I I had to I I don't know why I cut that. I think something better came up, but mm -hmm. I still want to use norgunk in there because <laughs> that's properly flavoursome, you know. So <laughs> I, I'm thinking more of the swears we came up with, not the insults that we came mm -hmm. up with, because I think you're thinking of the stuff where it was like dumb sniffs and things like that, like mm -hmm. the language that the, the the prisoners were using against against mm -hmm. Val. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, this isn't so much uh, so much uh, slang specific, it's more like uh, what would be the swears you use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just like the idea that Jules now so furious that like a whole explosion of words comes out of her mouth like, you know, <laughs> Fucking twat. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna sit on this. I think I need to think on it. Mm -hmm. Because there is an opportunity here, and we should definitely take it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me write it down. So far, uh, one of the insults that I'm most proud of is in, uh, what was it, chapter 3? Uh, calling the uh, station security pocket patrol. <laughs> mm, yeah. But uh, this is 
what we have right now is more like human condition. <laughs> If it isn't what a human scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> what was I said earlier uh, that we've got an opportunity here to do something special, so we should. At the beginning of my notes for Split Personality 3, there's a message to myself that basically goes, you've got an opportunity here to explore <laughs> Luna and Rogue's like, whole backstory thing like reclaimers all this and that mm -hmm. and then underneath in like bold letters it says do not fuck this up <laughs> <laughs> this is your one chance don't fuck this up you have one job <laughs> yep it was just reminiscent of that you've got one opportunity <laughs> come on now <laughs> okay continue reading for now yes okay. he looked smug as ever his tacky sculptural hair continued the pattern of ink swirls on his bulging neck, his badge barely visible on his fancy textured garbs. That's veteran seeker, Wraith, to you. I will also accept, sir. The fuck are you doing here? Could I ask you the same. Here I am, minding my own business. Official business. Then, what a surprise! You show up. Jewel remembered the friendly... Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. Uh, yeah. So you just happen to be at the exact same spot at the exact same time as me. Wraith feigned an offended look. Oh god, I'm reading it in like the wrong... I'm reading the wrong bits in the wrong voice. <clears throat> ooh, okay. ooh, ooh. I want to do this. I, I want to read Wraith. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on then. Okay, so... Uh, he looked smug as ever. His tacky sculptural hair continuing the pattern of ink swirls on his bulging neck his badge barely visible on his fancy textured garbs. That's veteran seeker right to you. I will also accept sir. The fuck you doing here? Could ask you the same. Here I am, minding my own business. Official business. Then, what a surprise, you show up. So, you just happen to be at the exact same spot at the exact same time. Wraith feigned an offended look. Hey, I'm working here. It's you who's on my way. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> You've been tracking me, haven't you? What do you want, fuckface? Like I said, I'm here on official business. Hey, if you play nice, maybe we can even help each other out. No way, you bounty stealing... <laughs> etc. Okay, you, you, you go on reading. I'm not on reading mode. Right. I was enjoying it. <laughs> Jewel was formulating a sufficiently potent insult in her head when a cough interrupted their standoff. Neither had noticed when the admission clearance signal had lit up. Seeker... Oh, hang on. Whoa. Should we pause there for a sec? Yeah. Okay. So, basically, let's... Clean up this line, no longer needed. And I was also uh, trying to come up with. Uh, hmm. Let me show you something. So, let, let me try this. Hey, I'm working here. It's you who's on my way. Poppycock! You've been tracking me, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> it works! It yeah. works. So, so, again, I was trying to get rid of uh, vocabulary that is sort of very our era. And I think bullshit is very our era. <laughs> Mm. In Mira's Legion, when Scribe shows Mira the uh, evidence that he's gathered, uh, he, he's showing her some of the stuff like the people healing and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And and he's like, there were no reclaimers, no nanites, none of that. He just healed. And Mira looks at him and she's like, 
Bora shit. You know, like that's one of her swears. Uh, yeah, but I think Bora shit is. It's like. Um, Two blocks. Yeah, it's. Bora shit is like standard hour. It, it's like taking something that we are familiar with and, and sort of. Mm. appropriating it. I don't know if that's the right word, but sort of like. Yeah, no, that Trying, trying to to present something of ours as something of theirs. Hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean. Actually, that's another opportunity I've got to put some more flavour in. Mm -hmm. And instead, I've sort of just gone, oh, you know, yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like for example, if you take the world of Fallout and somebody says Brahmin shit, well, it makes sense because it's close enough. Mm. But. Uh, in the Chaos Nova universe, the there should be a certain remove or certain distancing from uh, from from what's familiar to us. And while you while the function of the word should be immediately clear, the uh, the presentation or the format or the the context, uh, it, so it's like its function should be clear, but not uh, not its uh, mm, not the surface elements. Mm. So right, so for example, if uh, if you use Borashet as in universe where, then it's like slapping a sticker <laughs> onto something to make it uh, shiny and new, or to make mm. to make it authentic. But yeah, that's that's the thing. It doesn't feel authentic. Yeah. A little impromptu discussion there about in-universe swears. <laughs> mm -hmm. That that's all. That's all part of the uh, part of the chapter discussion. Also, I'm easily distracted. <laughs> <laughs> You who's on my way, in my way. I'm working here. It's you who's on my way. Yeah, in my way. He looks smooth as ever. His tacky sculptured hair. Something, something here that's almost—it's almost there, but I need to sit on this phrase a little bit. Basically, what I mean is—is is that uh, he has—he has some sort of neck tattoos, some sort of pattern tattooed on his neck, and and his uh, hair is cut in a similar pattern. Mm. So basically, it's it's like all one. Fancy shit, yeah. overly lavish and overly elaborate. <laughs> so there's like he's had a pattern shaved into his hair, and that yeah, continues yeah, yeah, down yeah. into his neck tattoos and that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. See, the sentence says that. Mm -hmm. I got that from the sentence, yeah. but I think I know what you mean about how it's, you know, it's not quite. It reads a little bit too dense. Like I mm. need to. I need to cut something out of there, or like meddle a little bit. Okay. And I will need to ch double check uh, how they speak so that uh, Wraith would be speaking in more sort of lavish uh, sentences <laughs> and uh, toodaloo, <laughs> sort of. Uh, what was it? Ancient Wisconsin? Yeah, uh, no, well, uh... I can't remember. Was it not, why won't anyone tell me what happened to Wisconsin? No. Or was that Wyoming? Georgia. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, well, that, yeah, 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 yeah. The moustache was Wyoming. Wyoming, yes. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wyoming was the one with with a, with a moustache and uh, no, and I wonder why he didn't have a monocle. 
but uh, why doesn't anyone tell me what happened to Georgia? Was the was the catchphrase? <laughs> As a side note, the latest Red versus Blue was amazing. <laughs> so good. Meanwhile, shall we <laughs> carry on? <laughs> so this is where the official speak comes in. Seeker. Designation Valkyrie? Here to claim custody of one Fortune Harper. Wraith stepped forward, suddenly civil and businesslike. Seeker designation oh, Seeker designation Wraith. I am here to claim that custody. Jewel raised a brow. <laughs> Are you now? Another coincidence, huh? She moved to the admission gate and presented her credentials. Wraith edged forward too. Step back, sir. We do not have that claim registered on your name. Oh, it's okay. I'm with her. <laughs> so that's why you need me so badly. You want fortune, but I hold the contract. They won't let you in without me. The admission officer us ushered Jewel towards the gate. What about him, ma'am? Is he your partner? My what? <laughs> 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 Is he with you on this case? Do you vouch for his access? Jewel did her best to hold back a... Okay. Jewel did her best to maintain her business face. No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, so some nuances need, uh, uh, need uh, tuning here. So I was thinking, race step forward, suddenly... So I think all civil and business like reads a little bit too casual. So it's more like suddenly. Yeah, I think I will just cut it out. Doesn't doesn't need the all here. Suddenly civil and business like. Seeker, designation wraith. I am here to claim that custody. Okay is one of the words that I'm trying to weed out because it, again this is very uh, very our era. I would say fine. Mm -hmm. In other places I have replaced okay with all right. Oh, it's fine. I'm with her. <laughs> Actually, I think in this case, all right is is better. Oh, it's like it's, it's le right. legit. It's it's kosher. Yeah. Google's gonna tell you off for that. <laughs> oh no. And I think what I what else I'm gonna do is oh, oh, it is all right. I'm with her. Ah yes, okay. Oh wow, lots of notes in the next paragraph. Just a second, let me... <laughs> should we... should we italicize or capitalize the my what? <laughs> Is he your partner? My what? <laughs> Jewel, you're oh, so no, legendary. My, my what now? <laughs> <laughs> No, I think let's let's leave it as is. An italicized what might be I don't know. Oh my what? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jewel, you're so awesome, and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> like capitals might be too much. Mhm. Mm the capitals are implied. My what? <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. And I think did her best to maintain her business face is closer to... Although... Gloating Grin speaks to like a cheekiness in Ro in uh, Jewel, do you know what I mean? Like there's yeah, a... Yeah, but that's a... I 
will go with business face. Joel did her best to maintain her business face. Yeah. It's like when you're reading it, then you're also doing your best to keep the business face. It's like you can the 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 mm, the impulse to gloat comes through the context. You don't have to spell it out. No. I do not. <laughs> oh, Jewel. Uh, yeah, okay, so in the next paragraph we get to the point where I have added in some language flavor. It's been a while, Rainy. So I have already I have already added uh, the earworm context in chapter seven, so I no longer need this one. And the only question part here is that. Uh, basically what I'm trying to say that his his standard was so standard that uh, that the translation protocols didn't didn't activate mm -hmm. so it's 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 not about being close to her uh, her dialect or anything but it's uh, it's being close to the common common reference common point of reference Okay, I'm going to read this one now. <laughs> Designation, Operative Division, Rystar 1. Assignment initiated by the little man who had introduced himself as Officer Rainey sat behind the huge ancient console and took his sweet time double-checking all the details in Jules' contract. Same as with other port people, his standard was so close to hers that the earworm hardly ever chimed in. Her attention wandered into the impeccably trimmed curls of some potted green trees along the loomy wall, with the overly neat storage and spotless interfaces, a telltale, a telltale sign of idle enforcement. So, Fortune Harper, Jules snapped back to focus. Yes, our office did pick him up, approximately one megasecond ago, he sounded proud. We'd been monitoring the escape pod signal and sent a team for pickup. We'd assumed it'd just be more guards evacuating from the station, see? Paul's there? Yes. Okay. Okay, uh... So first off, let's... I will come up with something else. But this is where the main issue here is is working in the enforcement uh, ties and uh, and the heaven patrol thingy. Uh huh. Yes, our officers. I think it's better. 
better for our people. We've been monitoring the escape. Yeah, I could say we picked him up, or we did pick him up, but uh, I want him to. I, I want it to be like longer and more official sounding. Mm -hmm. And instead, assuming it would be just more guards evacuating, he could either say that uh, that they didn't know whether it was a malfunction or a fugitive. Or he could just... Or he could say that <laughs> the ev evacuation was the most entertainment they have had in. in <laughs> like I like that approach. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but this is the, this wouldn't be his approach. We couldn't know for sure if we'd be dealing with a malfunctioning pod or a genuine fugitive. And and, and genuine fugitive is like, oh, genuine fugitive! There is, I, I would say that in the next part we do have certain plot iffiness going on. Read it. Yeah, read it. <coughs> For a moment, Jewel forgot her own pursuit. What are you saying? You actually knew what's going on with the station? The officer looked oddly proud again. Knew? I was happy to hear they're finally putting up a fight. A cousin of mine worked there for a while. Told me half the people there are just unlucky sods. Someone wants out the way. He fell silent under Jewel's glare. What about the other half? At least a few of my own contracts have ended up in there. None of those should ever be let... let... sorry. What about the other half? At least a few of my own contracts have ended up in there. None of those should ever be let anywhere near populated worlds, believe me. But the innocent... Jewel cut him off. And what did you do about it, ever since you learned of those unlucky sods? Well... We filed a note in the System Council's Life Protection Network. That ought to mean something, right? Anyway, that's not why... 
Anyway, that's not what you're here for. Julie's back a little and waited. So yes, we picked up Harper, processed him, found out his convict status, and had him transferred to a proper holding facility. He clasped his hands with the finality of a happy clerk, content for a protocol well followed. Jewel tried to maintain her calm. And? And what? Where was he transferred then? Rainy blinked in confusion. That is as much as I've been authorised to disclose. He gave her that apologetic bureaucrat shrug. Why don't you check in at your nearest hub? Get the info via official channels. I'm gonna stop there. Mm-hmm. Right, so <coughs> my issue here is with the uh with the exchange about what happens at the at the station and what opinion do the enforcement have about it? So point one, we will segue to hear from, yes, we, pi- we picked up somebody, we were tracking a pod, we didn't know So basically the connection or the jump from, from commenting that uh, a car guard evacuating and and uh, and uh, the whole exchange about oh you know you knew what was going on here it's it's kind of a weak link One thing that we did change was that the other pods, or the guard, normal guard, guard pods, came down without a hitch. something like point one there is the event of the normal evacuation and then there is this one port that that has a faulty signal On one hand there is the evacuation event itself, on the other hand there is the there is the signal that something's up and also uh, the port may be Maybe malfunctioning, but then again, I, w- I would I would think that uh, all the all the guard pods would be directed somewhere on the terrain and require pickup. So it's more like yeah, we we sent a pickup as with others, and we were extra careful because unknown. Mhm. That 
that's where he could say that uh, where he could get into his sort of uh, unhealthy excitement like, <laughs> like yeah we, we picked we 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 went after our people and then there was this uh, this one pod with the with the blinking alert like oh, we didn't know if it was a malfunctioning <laughs> pod or an actual fugitive oh my <laughs> <laughs> so maybe Joel's reaction is not appropriate here it's more like she notices that that he's kind of too happy about it. And I think uh, the what are you saying is inappropriate, more like, wait, you actually knew? You actually knew what's going on with the station is... Uh, there's something wrong there. Hmm? You actually knew what was going on with the station. Uh, and I think the whole point itself is, is a little bit wrong. So it's more like, wait, you know that there is something off with that station. Hmm. Yeah. But of course, right now I have overextended this point. Like something good going on is more like a reference to the whole Voltec logic. But what they are, what they should be talking about, this uh, is just the event of uh, of riot and 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 that. And some of this talk doesn't make much sense again because if if we're dealing with the uh, Heron Patrol manning the Justice Office and Heron Patrol manning the station, then of course they would know that their their people are in some sort of trouble. So it's I think I sense a cut coming. Yeah, I think the only only thing to keep here is is Jewel commenting on you you see him you see him kind of I I think in, inappropriately excited is mm. is the word here. So knowing is not the point here. And then everything up until, so yes, we picked up Harper. That's all kind of moot now. No, uh, this uh, this part uh, does feed into the whole uh, hidden subplot about the evil experiments or some somebody somebody doing something nefarious with it. I would leave it in, but it's no longer it, it shouldn't be as as in focus as it was. Okay. So it's so it's basically why are you so happy happy about this event? Th 
that sort of thing. Or like your your company lost control. Mm. And if we tweak the point that uh, that the guards who who are stationed at the station aren't uh, aren't there uh, aren't there exactly out of their free will and uh, and goodwill i think uh, this is this is the point to uh, to bring it out Yeah, I think this is the most appropriate place to say, oh, they're not exactly there of their own volition, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the company told them to go there. <laughs> yes, exactly that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think uh, from here. So let's let's move this one down here. This is okay-ish, but uh, but yeah, this is this part needs some thinking. I think we can keep the cousin. Mm hmm. But not worked. But more like was was assigned there. No. I was happy to hear they were finally putting up a fire. I think we can cut out this part. So it's more like he was happy that there has been a disruption. So he's mm. he's not he's not so much I w I would play it this way. He's not so much uh uh bleeding heart uh, on the side of the prisoners. As he as he is happy to see that these these operations are are broken up somewhat. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Cool. I think I can. I think I can go with that. Disruption for the win! Yeah, so the way I would keep it is more like... Um, mm, uh, ooh, escape event! And we might have a, a genuine fugitive! <laughs> and, uh, and Jules like, you seem... You seem oddly excited about this. <laughs> uh, isn't isn't it bad that that your people were were forced uh, forced out and your company lost uh, that your company lost control and your people were 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 forced to leave? And he's like, it is not the position you choose. <laughs> I had a, a cousin of mine was assigned there for a while. It's pretty bad. <laughs> and and then he could. He could mention that uh, that there are rumors that half of the people there rumors. Mm -hmm. Rumors that uh, that many people.
that many people in there are just unlucky swords someone wants out of the way. So what about the others? I don't even know how much of this dialogue I'm gonna keep, but I will I will tweak it. What about the others? I ran into a former contract of mine. <laughs> Not one of those who Should ever be let them in. Yeah, so, so the the language here could be cleaned up, but but this is more about he's he's not the kind you would want near near populated world. <laughs> but of course, if we want to, if we want to keep the point about Jewel giving him Lenis's uh, data we have to keep in the point that he was thinking of the innocent but did nothing because otherwise that would come out of nowhere And I think uh, they, the the point about well, we filed a note in somewhere. We, uh, again, I would make it a specific organization, not a uh, system council or anything. Mm. So it's more like we told Amnesty International <laughs> sort of deal, not not we we filed a report to the government. Mm. Amnesty Galactic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. No. Just no. <laughs> then from here anyway that's not what you're here for is where I would keep it as it is uh, where did you read channels official channels yeah I'm up to oh, this okay. point now okay yeah, so I think the objective is clear-ish here, so we can keep on going. I'm not going to read the uh, green bit, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Jewel sat in silence, fighting the urge to inflict great physical harm to Rainey's happy clerk face and his groomed office with green trees. Then she had an idea. Here! Check my bio data. Rainy shrug half. Rainy shrug froze halfway when the readings filled his screens. Another Harper? You don't mean? Yes. Immediate family. Sister. For the first time since since she'd heard of Fortune, the word suddenly felt different from the other case data. It felt personal. Good. 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 <laughs> he looked unnaturally excited all of a sudden. This does indeed grant you further disclosure. Fortune Harbour has been transferred to the Justice Centre in Prosperitas System. Case number... After some vigorous tapping, he handed Jewel a little chip holder with all the data he had deemed himself authorised to disclose. Now, Miss Harper... His helpful grin was rather unclerky. Is there anything else I can do for you? No. She stood up. That... Actually, there is one thing, she gave him Lenny's info. Here's an innocent for you, one that doesn't belong up there. See what you can do for him. 
Oh, that is. <laughs> Hello. <That is. laughs> okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I have I have an alter text for this one. Uh -huh. Another. Hopper. Thinning. Oh. Like, I would want her to spell out the immediate family, because that means official, officially things are different. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, when I when I spell it out this way, so... Okay, this sentence is clunky, I will tend to it. But so, when, he's, when he asks... Another Harper Henning offspring? You don't mean? And the logical answer to this is yes. Sister. As in immediate family. As in mm -hmm. unlock your, <laughs> your data. <laughs> I like the. Um, he gave her a little chip data with all the data he had deemed himself authorized to disclose. I thought that was pretty clever. Uh -huh. I uh -huh. like that a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> And instead, that uh, she had an idea. I would introduce an inner thought here. It's more like, is there nothing I can do to prove blah blah blah? Hmm. And not bio data, but do I have it somewhere here? I have caffeine corn. I have suggestions for some names. I have a habitation format. Yurt clusters. Ooh. Oh, I even have I even have uh, the uh, expression for the language comment. His standard was so devoid of localisms that. Oh. also have this is an interesting paper I have <laughs> scribbled whatever here mm. I also have noted down trilobite class mm. for ships <laughs> and mammary scaffold <laughs> I will let you okay. figure out yeah think, <laughs> if you think about it it will come to you I'm just seeing domes. That's all I'm getting is domes. It is. Sorry. It, is it is not the building. The domes is. Do you are thinking in the right direction, but wrong. Uh, wrong context. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me let me read everything I have on this paper. So. Uh, I have apparently I have I have started taking taking notes when I was reading chapter ten. So I did have the line for another Harper Henning offspring. Then I have another uh, sort of everyday invention uh, that comes uh, that sort of belongs together with the hygiene protocol. Clothes imbued with uh, another p bacterial mix. Uh, let's see. 
inventions. Self-cleaning surfaces for on-skin gear. Biological, adaptive and regular stuff. Surfer shake. Ah, yeah, so I, I, I thought of a sort of surfer shake as sort of gear getting rid of the grime. This would require smart materials. But uh, but the biologically adaptive uh, goop would uh, would get would just process the, the stuff. So then I have a line. His standard was so devoid of localisms that put that mm -hmm. in. Then I had the idea for yurt clusters as a sort of settlement model. Then for terraforming, I have written down reefs. <laughs> a a uh, uh, as a um, important element for uh, for biosphere building. Then I have the name Nablutajel. I think okay. it's either a ship. I've meant it as a ship name or station name. It means observer in Russian. Then there is the magical uh, magical word caffeine corn. <laughs> then I have a little uh, a little uh, paragraph for chapter seventeen, which I will not read here. Then I have noted down that uh, in the uh, your uh, worlds there could be a girl's name Riga. Oh, nice. <laughs> then I have written down mention bunk time, and I put in I've put a tick next to it. So I <laughs> guess I guess it was about uh, chapter eight, maybe, or earlier. No, I think it was about chapter six. Mm -hmm. Then I have written down the name Svalbard. Uh, which would be like either a ship or a town or or a facility for great archiving purposes because Svalbard is the uh, uh, seed bank, seed, yeah, yeah, the seed seed vault, seed bank. Mm. Then I've written here trilobite class <laughs> for ships, and finally I have written down memory scaffold. Still nothing? No, sorry. Uh, we are mammals. The word mammal comes from the uh, from the uh, word memory, or comes from the same uh, same uh, word stem as memory, meaning Bre boobs. Breasts. Boobs. Yes, so <laughs> mammary scaffolding. I d I'm not following you. I'm sorry. I'm really not. I d Breast support. <laughs> oh, like, like a yeah. Bra. I was, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think of uh, think of uh, clothing items and how you would again how you would ditch the names and expressions that we're used to and instead call something out by by function or or by something else. Memory scaffolding sounds like some awesome BDSM <laughs> thing, though. Like, you know, super kinky bondage device. Well, can be. I'm fully on board with this. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> okay, but now where were we? Uh, Last paragraph, by the looks of it. His standard was so devoid of localism, so I got this one down. It is not the position you choose. That is not what you are here for. Where was it transferred then? Official channels and immediate family. And I'm using immediate family as an alternative to next of kin. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to give this line to him instead of her. Okay, yeah. So it's like he says, 
Ah, immediate family. Good, good. Mm -hmm. uh, protocol. <laughs> Would it be better for for Jewel to say yes, I'm his sister to give that sentence maybe a bit more weight? Hmm. I wouldn't. I I don't want to make too many full sentences here. It's more like okay. they are having a back and forth. So another Harper Henning offspring? You don't mean? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> I get to do more protocol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah! <laughs> Rules. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the the sentence, after some vig vigorous tapping, he held, uh, he handed Jewel a little chip holder with all the data he had deemed himself authorized to disclose. <laughs> uh, this is one of those sentences that I'm proud for. Like, mm. on one hand, it is, it is uh, long and complex as fuck, but on the other hand, it's just sort of like... <laughs> <laughs> the payoff is... Yeah, it, it works so well. Yeah. I love it. And if you contrast it with some sentences in chapter nine's beginning, where it's kind of, kind of, sort of very minimal and shaved, and yet it it manages to feel heavy. Mm. So this more, more, more sentences like these. <laughs> <laughs> When I was reading that, you sort of just hear, and you, this is exactly the sort of bureaucratic <laughs> person that we'd encounter, uh -huh. and exactly their mm -hmm. sort of attitude to it. You've nailed it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the okay, da, 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 anything else I can do for you here? Yeah. So I need to, I need to shake the paragraph shape up a little bit because the way it's presented now is a little bit off but yeah we're wrecking business I think you can you can read the last part <coughs> the admission officer walked her back out the gates straight into Wraith's expectant grin Jewel set her own disappointment aside to fully indulge in the moment's build up she waited for the officer to leave and observed Wraith's grin quiver, then fade completely. He jumped to his feet and stepped forward to face Jewel. Where is he? Not here, obviously. What do you mean, not here? What did you do? Jewel found his impotent rage face most amusing and had to remind herself not to gloat too openly. That's right. I went through all this trouble to get here, spent all this time with these lovely office drones for an elaborate ruse. Fucking genius! <laughs> she began walking away. They took him in, and then they took him somewhere else. Simple. Then they told me to contact a see seeker hub and get further details through official channels. She turned her face away, lest she betrayed her true position. Wraith leaped after her. You're lying! Jewel kept her pace. Go on, ask him yourself. If you find anyone on this station called Fortune Harper, you're welcome to capture them. I won't be stopping you. She reached a transport booth and hopped in. She hopped into a transport booth without looking back. Yeah, I think the second part of that is better. Mm -hmm. there, there, there might be an element of, like, she's leaving Wraith... Right, d there there might be a mention to how she's leaving Wraith behind. I don't know. Mm -hmm. She walked away way up from him, or walk mm -hmm. away on him. Because when this was originally written, uh, I think she flew. Yeah, she 
she pushed him or something and he and he hit the floor and then there was like a group of people around and you know <laughs> just lots of shit going on uh -huh. and this is much better just bang she hops in a transport you know she doesn't actually attack him this time which was great but not allowed <laughs> sorry yeah. And then when he returns to his ship, he gets done for drug charge. Oh, I really did not like Wraith. I like <laughs> him even less now, but seriously. It will... They're... Everything in good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, so... Basically, yeah, the end part is, is mostly okay again. Just a matter of mm. replacing some words and such. I love the interaction between Jewel and Race. <laughs> They're just so angry with one another. Well, Jewel, well, one of them's quite angry with the other one, and the other one just doesn't let it phase him by the looks of things. But then, uh, I've got a really good. No, chemistry I think uh, I think it's it's more not even let uh, not even about not letting uh, to phase him, but more like he kind of enjoys pushing her buttons. Mm -hmm. Oh like yeah, definitely. If, if, if if there is a certain school bully background going on there then hmm. hmm so let's think about the let's think about the past uh, relationship actually for a second so again without going into too many details, but uh, the way we have set it up right now is that basically they they hated each other pretty much from hello. Mm -hmm. So Wraith is her senior, has been in the ranks longer, but she's uh, she's this sort of uh, wunderkind uh, prodigy jumping in and 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 earning her way to the ranks uh, faster than maybe he, he thinks uh, she deserves I think that's appropriate yeah hmm. I just know from from Anything prior to Seeker, I'm not too privy to. I just know that Wraith and Valkyrie, they're, they're not the best of friends, you know, like... Mm -hmm. And I think it's more... I think it's more on Jules part, like... You're right to say that they didn't like each other from the hello, but I think it was more on Jules' half that she didn't like Wraith from the hello. And then as that relationship's gone on, as she's advanced through the ranks, it's then sort of been mutually, like... Wraith is also no. I, no? Don't, buy, I don't buy that. Uh, no? it, has to, it has to be mutual from from the start. Like okay. if, if you're if you're a rookie somewhere, and you don't know anybody, then uh, okay, you you can claim gut feeling about somebody, but basically, in order to develop a deep hate towards somebody, that somebody has to wrong you somehow. So, so I am much more aboard with the idea that uh, the older kids uh, immediately took a somewhat organized dislike towards her. There might have been some some bullying and some uh, some sort of fr friction going on, and maybe maybe some secret beating somewhere in the off hours or, or whatever. And. Uh, and uh, and everything else just built upon this, mm. and and also the the whole where the seniors you should be our inferior you should respect us nah -uh. that that uh, that sort of dynamic there as well. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, I think I think your approach is better. But yeah, if I if I come up with a creative uh, insult for her, then I will I will note it down right down. I just left a note here. Mm. 
Right, well, that was uh, chapter 10. Mm hmm. It was. Yeah. I think I think we have depleted the discussions on chapter 10. <laughs> <laughs> We've depleted the uranium! <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much for watching, whoever is watching. Thank you. Till the next one. Bye! Bye!